Hello everyone. Today let us learn how to model and assemble universal coupling in SOLIDWORKS. Total there are 7 parts in universal coupling. Fork, center, shaft, parallel key, pin, collar and taper pin. So let us take the fork. As you can see they are given the front view as well as the top view. So I will be using this top view profile to construct this component. Then I will be moving on to the side plane to construct this. So let us start the modeling in SOLIDWORKS. Open SOLIDWORKS. Click on new. Select part. Click OK. Select the top plane. Right click. Sketch. Now you go to circle. Draw two circles. Draw two circles. Go to dimensions. Smart dimension. One of the diameter is 40. The other one is 16. So here if you observe the given radius of 20, you can always change it by selecting it. Select the dimension, go to leader. Here we have an option called radius. If you select it, you will get radius option as well. Right? So the default will be diameter, you can always change it to the radius part. The next comes the lines now. So what I'll be doing is I'll be using midpoint line. So exactly from the center, I'll draw a line here. It should be vertical. vertical, the dimension part, the distance from the center of this to this line is 18 mm, is 18 mm and you need to coincide this point that is midpoint of this line, midpoint of the origin should be horizontal so that it should not move. The next one is I will offset this line addition of 16. So go to offset, mention 16, select change should be off, select this line, click here. So I offset this line at a distance of 16. Now let me give constraint to the height now. Let me give the constraint to the height, so which is 57. So it is 57, 57. So you can apply the relation called equal this and this should be equal, right? So I have constructed this. Now what I will do is I'll be drawing a tangential line from here to the circle. How do I draw that, draw that is? Select the line. As you can see here, as soon as you power through the on circle, you'll get this line, dotted line. So what I'll do is I'll select this point. You can see the relations. It will say coincident as well as tangent. Click here. Similarly, select this point. Just move the cursor on the circumference of the circle. You'll get this dotted line, right? Make use of this and you need to click where you'll get coincident as well as tangential point. Click. Now you go to trim. Trim the unwanted portion. These things are not required. Complete this profile also. Complete this profile, right? So this is the profile which I have created in the top view. Now I will exit, select the sketch, go to extrude. Here be careful, don't select the sketch plane as your extrusion plane. So you need to offset this at a distance of 28. So go to offset, the distance is 28, 28. Select the profile, now you can see the gap now. So it will leave a gap of 28 and the thickness, the thickness is 14 mm. So the thickness is 14 mm. Let's extrude. Okay. Click OK. Right. Now use the drop down menu. Select the same sketch which we have drawn earlier. Go to extrude. Same thing you should repeat, but the direction is different. So the offset distance is 28, but it should move in the other direction. Similarly, this, select this. So now as you can see here, from here to here, the distance will be 56 and the thickness will be 14 plus 14, right? Next, click OK. Now go to the same sketch, extrude, select this, say mid plane, select the mid plane option. Now you give the overall height, that is 84. When you give 84, it will match with the profile. Suppose if you do anything wrong, then it will not match, then you can always go back and you can change it. Now it is coinciding, so not a problem. Now you can see it appears as a single component, right? Clear? Now let me select this surface for my sketch. That is, I have to create a hole for the shaft. So that I should do it. So right click here, sketch, you can say normal to. Now I'll draw two circles. One circle of diameter 30. The other one 
57. So two diameters are there, 57 and 30. After this, you can just tilt it so that you will get to know. Exit sketch, select the sketch, right? Go to extrude, don't select the entire thing. So you can go to selected contour, select only the outer one, okay? That is, I want a solid block. I will explain why you want complete solid. I will say the distance. The distance is 38 mm. This is 38 mm. Click OK. But we need all over, right? So in order to get that, select the same sketch. Go to extrude cut. Go to extrude cut. Here, go to selected contour. Select only the inner circle. Then you need to extrude in the other direction of 38. That is extrude cut for 38 mm. Click OK. But if you do that, you can see here still it is having material. We need to cut in both the directions. So what I will do is I'll I will do it. That is I'll go to edit the feature. I'll say through all both the directions. Through all both the directions. Now you can clearly see that it has created a hole. Right. So go to extrude cut. Select through all both. Then you will be able to get the hole. Right, that is why I didn't create the hole initially. So this is how I can complete. Now I'll create uh, the keyway or the parallel key. How do I create the keyway? Yes, I will draw the profile here and I will do the extrude cut. So you can do that here. Right click, sketch, normal to, right. Now let me go to midpoint line. Let me go to midpoint line. Let me draw an horizontal line. After this, I will draw continuous line like this. The distance is from here till here. You can select up to this point. So what I will do is I will can select from here till here. So that there is no confusion. Go to smart dimension. Select this. Hold shift key. You can see this. Click here. It is 33.5, 33.5. Next, I will apply the relation. Select this, select this, say vertical. So that this line will not move. It will be exactly in the middle. Then the width of the parallel key is 8 mm. They have given 8 mm. That I will take care. And this line should be below this arc. That's all. So don't uh, place it nearer to this. So you should come below, right? Now you come out of the sketch, select the sketch. Go to extrude cut, go to extrude cut, through all both, through all both, click OK. Now you can see, so you can select through all only because in the other direction there is nothing. So you can always, you will get the same result through all, click OK, right? So you get the same output. So this is how the first component can be completed. Now let me go to the appearance metal so you can select the steel so brushed steel if you select this is how it appears save the part save so give the first component that is the file name as the first component fork save so i've said in universal coupling folder control yes so this completes the first component fork now let us go move on to the second component center so go to new part now, to create this, there are two ways. I can select the top plane as well as front plane. I'll go to the top plane, sketch, go to circle, draw circles, two concentric circles. The diameter of the circles, one is having 32, the other one is having 16, right? So, exit sketch, select the sketch, go to extrude, select mid plane as your sketch plane. Now, overall, Height is 56. Click OK. So this is how we have created. Now let me select the front plane and sketch plane. Normal to the distance between this to this. They are given as 18 mm. So let me go to construction line. Draw a line here of 18 mm. Draw a line here of 18 mm. Go to circle. Draw two concentric circles here again. Same diameter. That is one is having 32. The other one is having 16. 16 mm, right? So after this, exit sketch, same thing you repeat again, extrude. So mid plane 56, you can see here, click OK. But if you do this, you can observe the problem associated with this.
right? So that's why whenever you come across this kind of problem, what you can do is you can extrude only the cylindrical part. That is when you do the extrusion, selected contour, you can select both the circles, make it solid. Okay. Same thing you do it here also, right? Select both the profiles. As you can see here, selected contour, select both the profiles so that it becomes solid. Now you can go to the same sketch, select the same sketch, go to extrude cut. Now go to selected contour, select the inner one and select the mid plane as your extrusion cut plane. Now if you click OK, now you can see it will cut. The same thing I will do it here, that is go to sketch 2, go to extrude cut, right? Now select the mid plane, selected contour should be only the inner circle, select the only in inner circle, right? If you select only the inner circle, then the extrusion cut will happen. See here. Right? Now let me apply a small fillet here. To fillet, you can take radius as 1 mm and you can select only this arc portion. You can see the preview. Click OK. So that it has joined. So this is how center can be created. Now let me go to the appearance. Appearance then comes. Steel. Here I can apply machine steel. Right. Control S. Save the file. Control S. Enter. Center. Now let me create the third component shaft. Let me close this file. So go to new part. So shaft is very easy to create. You can select any right plane, sketch. Go to circle, draw circle. So here itself, let me create the profile of the keyway, parallel keyway. So let me go to midpoint line. Let me draw a midpoint line. So make sure the midpoint and origin are coincident, sorry, uh, vertical. Otherwise, this midpoint line can move anywhere. Now let me give this width as 8 mm and this diameter is 30 mm. Right? You can bring this. It will not move anywhere, it will be in the middle. So next comes the distance. So smart dimension, click on this line, hold shift key, select this line. So they are given the distance as 26.5, give 26.5. Now you go to line, complete this profile so that it becomes closed. Complete this profile, go to trim, trim this. Okay. Now say okay, exit sketch. Now let me extrude this for 60 mm. So how do I extrude? Once again, select the sketch, go to extrude. So select this profile, give 60 mm. Give 60 mm, you can see the keyway, click OK. Now the shaft can run throughout, so that is why you can see the interrupted section view of the shaft. So you can give another 20 mm for this. So I'll select the sketch, I'll go to extrude. You can select offset or you can do the extrusion on the other side, not a problem. I can go to this option as well as this option. So let's switch on thin feature, not required. Now you can see here, I will extrude in other direction for another 20 mm. For another 20 mm, I will select, click OK. See now, so I have created the keyway. I have created the shaft portion also. Now let me do the parallel key. Control S, the third part shaft is also ready. So you can go to appearance and you can apply stainless steel. Okay. Control S. Close this part. Go to new part. Now parallel key. And this is very quite easy. You can select any plane for that matter. Select end plane or you can select right plane. Sketch. Go to rectangle. Draw a rectangle. This they are given as 8 mm. And this they are given 7 mm. Right? So 7 and 8, very difficult to distinguish. So let me create something else after extrusion. So go to extrude, exit sketch, select the sketch, extrude it for 56, the length of the parallel key, click OK. So since I know that, so this is 8 mm, right? So what I will do is I will select this face and I will apply some color to it so that I can easily distinguish when I do the assembly. So you can go to paint and you can select some blue color. 
for that this face is of 8 mm width similarly the bottom face you can select i can double click on the color it will apply blue so that this blue color represents that 8 mm width 8 mm and this is 7 mm 7 mm like this you can distinguish right so control s i will save this parallel key save it close it now go to the next part that is pin so pin so what i will do is i'll go to the top plane i'll draw two concentric circles here once again two concentric circles one is having a diameter of 25 the other one is having a diameter of 16 mm the other one is having a diameter of 16 mm exit sketch extrude so go to selected contour select both the circles so that thickness is 9 mm give 9 mm click ok now once again select the same sketch extrude so go to selected contour select only the inner circle and the overall length is 96 plus 9 so it comes to not 5 so you can give it here directly if you have any doubt you can just give it 96 plus 9 it will take 0 not 5 okay. click ok and this is the pin which i have created now we have to create a taper hole here in order to do that i will go to front plane as my sketch plane you can see the front plane is exactly in the middle go to sketch normal 2 now i will use a midpoint line midpoint line i will draw a line here go to line draw a line approximately of 1 mm right here draw a line approximately of 2 mm okay so go to smart dimension dimension this as 2 mm and dimension this as 1 mm okay why 1 and 2 because in the taper they are given diameter is 4 and taper ratio is 1 is to 30 so for a length of 30 mm so i'll dimension this as 30 and when you do that the midpoint will move very important select this midpoint select this origin hold control key and select make it vertical so that both will be in the same line it will not move now so similarly i should give the distance the distance is 89 so from here i should select smart dimension from here till here the distance is 89 now you can see the changing color it has become constrained black color earlier it was blue so the length is 30 so you can see the distance this is 2 and this is 1 because we have a taper ratio of 1 is to 30 so for every 30 mm the change of length will be 1 mm so don't take diametrical value take the radius value to do this so after this exit sketch select the sketch go to revolve cut go to revolve cut axis of revolution is this now you can see the cut click ok now you can see the taper hole to see it clearly you can go to print view control one and you can go to the wireframe model so that easily you can see the taper so this is how taper uh, the pin with the taper pin hole is created so control seven you can go to appearance you can go to metal you can apply yeah control s pin pin is done next component will be collar so go to collar so close this file go to new part here the same thing top plane sketch draw two concentric circles one and two so smart dimension these two circles so they are given the diameter one is having 25 mm as the diameter the other one is 16 mm 16 mm now exit sketch go to extrude select mid plane then the thickness is 10 mm thickness is 10 mm click ok so by doing this color is created the same kind of taper pinhole has to be created how to do that is very simple that is go to sketch as usual midpoint line select the plane so we should select the plane first select the plane sketch midpoint line midpoint line from here i'll draw a line here of 30 mm okay this length is 30 mm and as usual i'll draw one mm line here approximately one and here approximately two mm so dimension this so this is one mm and this is two mm 
Again, by this, we have given the constraint. Now exit the sketch, select the sketch, go to revolve cut. Revolve cut. So this axis of revolution is this, in which this profile will be revolved. Click OK. So by this, we have created table pinhole. So control S. So let me apply. Instant okay. control S. Call that pin. The last part is the taper pin, which I'll be doing it now. Close this, go to new part. So, to create the taper pin, we can select the front plane sketch plane, put a midpoint line, coincide with the origin as usual 30 mm. Then comes the 4 mm here, that is 2 mm radius. My dimension, this is 2 mm and this is 1 mm. You can see it is completely constrained now. Exit the sketch, go to revolve. Okay, to go to revolve, axis of revolution is this, click OK. So they are given small chamfer at the end. You can give the chamfer, go to chamfer. So you can give the value. 0.25 small value you can give around this edge as well as around this edge. So select the circles, don't select the face. Click OK. So as you can see now, small chamfer has been applied on both ends. Go to appearance, steel. Okay. Control S. Control S. This is paper pen. Okay, this is done. Now let me go to the assembly now. Let me close this. Go to new assembly. Assembly will ask which part you want to import first. As usual, I'll import fork, the first component fork. I'll insert it here. Right now, you can observe the origin, origin of the assembly, origin of the component. Both are a different location. Let me fix that first float. Select origin, hold control key. Select origin of assembly. Go to mate. It will apply coincident mate automatically. Click OK. Come out of mate to check origin of the part, origin of the assembly. Both are coinciding. Now let me right click on the component, fix this component. So that whenever you give any mating, this component should not move. Next, let us assemble the shaft as well as the center. So let me take the second component. We can take the second component center, open it, place it. Let me take the third component shaft. Shaft, open, place it. Right now, how do I assemble this? You go to mate, cylindrical mate, so both will be. You click OK. Next, after this, if you observe carefully, so this face, right, and this face should be in the same line. So, next, this face and this face. Click OK. Click OK. Now it is completely constrained. How do I check? You can check here. There is no minus symbol. For center, minus symbol is there because it is free to move. Whereas shaft, it's completely constrained. Right? Now let me import the parallel key as well. Parallel key, open, place it here. Now as you can see here, this is 8 mm. So it should match with the 8 mm of this. Right? So whenever you made, made the component, keep that in mind. Now let me go to mate. Select the star face, select the star face, say OK. okay. Select this face, select this face, click OK. Select this face, select this face, click OK. So now we have applied three mates there to get assembly of parallel key and shaft. Now let me assemble the center. Very easy. So you can select this hole, you can select this hole. Click OK. Now still it can move. You can see it can move in and out. Select this space. Select this space. Now it cannot move in and out. Whereas it can rotate. So this rotation can be constrained when I apply the second fork as well as the shaft. So in order to do that, what you can do is you can use control key, drag the component and leave it and then release the control key. So this is how you can create a copy of the component which is already there. Right. Now let me go to mate. Let me go to mate. Select this. Select this. Click. Okay. Now you can see it can move in and out. 
and it can rotate also see it can but the constraint part is the, this face and this face should be like it now you can clearly see that it can rotate but to have a good drafting what i will do is i'll make it perpendicular how do i do that is so now i'll select this as well as select this it becomes concentric click ok now for drafting purpose this is how it should appear control 1 control 5 clear now let me pull the shaft as well as the taper key how do i do the parallel key how do i do that as usual hold control key click on the component release the component component will be created similarly hold control key click on the component release the component like that you can do is it clear now suppose for example it's very, very difficult for you to visualize or to see on the shaft so you can always go for hide whichever the assembly is done you can hide that assembly and you'll be able to see the shaft as well as the parallel key easily now let me do the assembly of this so go to mate select this select this click ok now select this face select this face so it will be parallel click ok select this face select this face okay let me change the orientation we have a change orientation was reverse yes okay click okay so now you can see that we have created you should change the orientation otherwise the shaft will come on the other side okay same thing up to, applies to this also mating be careful because this is 8 mm so 8 mm should go up so 8 mm with 8 mm right now it has turned on its own so right click okay next comes the side one this side should be mated with this side click ok next the face so you can drag this select this face select this face see here it comes so three mates we have applied so let me switch on devices now so we can click on show component it will show now let me check or evaluate my drawing go to evaluate interference detection if you click on calculate it will show no interference so that means there is no interfer uh, interference of the objects whatever i assembled it's correct now we should insert a pin collar as well as taper pin okay let us insert the next component pin open pin so we can assemble this easily go to mate select this select this click ok right next same thing here mate select this face select this face click ok right now i have to you can see here it can rotate but whenever you do the drafting it becomes difficult you can see here the goal is that inclined so then it becomes very difficult for you to read the drawing so you should make it perpendicular there are so many ways out of this this is one of the way to make it perpendicular switch on this view temporary axis you can see this temporary axis here so you can select that axis and you can make it perpendicular to any of the plane so you can just confirm which plane we are in you can see here this is the front plane you can make it parallel to that plane or if you select the right plane you can make it perpendicular to that plane right so what i will do is i'll select this axis and i'll select the front plane now you can see it will rotate click ok so by doing this we have given the constraint you can go to the front view you can see it is exactly perpendicular once it is done you can always switch it off okay this is one of the way to make it parallel to front plane so next thing is i will import or i will insert collar go to collar open place it you should always keep an eye on the dimensions next mate this and this click ok but still it can rotate it can move up and down now i will select the hole which we have created this and this click ok so when you do that you are giving actually the degrees of freedom two direction that is it will be in line it, it cannot rotate also it cannot move up and down also it's completely constrained you can see here there is no minus symbol now we will insert the taper pin taper pin open place it here go to mate select this like this click ok click ok now you can see once again 
the taper pin can rotate it can rotate whereas it cannot move in and out okay not a problem the taper pin if it rotates also control one control seven now let me do the same thing for the other end hold control key drag the pin leave it so there's a shortcut for uh, copying the object now as usual go to mate select this select this click ok select this face select this face click ok now as usual you can go to switch on this via view temporary axis you can select this with the top plane now the problem it will be parallel or it can be coincident also not a problem because it is lying on the same line click ok okay now we have given the constraint let us uh, drag the pin over you will drag the collar drag the collar mate this and this sorry go to mate select this select this click ok now it can rotate right so select this select this click ok so it's assembled to get a better view let us go to control one control three this will give you the picture okay control four yes both are concentric control seven okay next thing is we have to import or we should insert the taper pin so hold control key first come out of mate hold control key drag it leave it now i go to mate select this select this click ok right so this completes the assembly part control 7 assembly of universal coupling let me save this assembly universal coupling right let us draft this so go to file make drawing from assembly make drawing from assembly select a4 switch off this display sheet format 295 10 okay observe mmgs that is a units scale very important is this first angle projection click on apply changes now you go to view palette now you can drag so in the question they are given generate print view left top in section so we will drag the top view and we will leave it here right press escape to come out of the view projection now go to drawing section view half section so left off means only this portion has to be removed so select the midpoint auto enhancing click ok so this is how left off in section will appear in front now do i project the side view is go to projected view select this print view similarly select the isometric view isometric view let me drag this up a little bit okay next let me do the ballooning part now so select this switch on this 3d modeling shaded view next select this go to annotation auto balloon click ok so when you do that you will get all parts so one two three four five six seven, seven parts are there now let us generate the bill of material select this go to tables bill of materials click ok it's done so let me delete the description delete the column okay double click say description description let's keep this here this is the bill of materials now let us try to dimension few of the things try to dimension the dimension major dimensions in the assembly so go to smart dimensions this diameter they mentioned that is 30 so how do we remove double zero go to options document properties dimensions trailing zeros remove click ok next similarly you can dimension the remaining things so for example the diameters radius similarly this diameter 
the diameter is already done. By that dimension, major dimensions of the assembly. So this completes the universal coupling and modeling as well as assembly as well as drafting. If you have any questions, any doubts, you can put it in the comment section. Uh, thanks for watching the video.